Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Kovacs Reacts. I appreciate you taking the time to come through, click on the video, check out what it is that we're doing over here. Feel free to hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below. And think about becoming a channel member. Everything goes towards the channel. Appreciate you for it. If not, leave a like and sub if you enjoy the content. Today we are taking a look at Mega Capital G. Who is another Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, another Yu-Gi-Oh channel here over on YouTube, and we are taking a look at this Yu-Gi-Oh player was arrested and suplexed <laughs> for slow playing at locals. Just imagine getting suplexed for like playing slow at locals. Go figure, right? But anyway, we about to hop right into it. Feel free check his channel out if this is kind of content that you're into as well. And yeah, without further ado, BAM! The Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series has always had a rather interesting relationship with fighting and or physical violence. Which is true, you gotta look at the manga more so for uh, for the fighting and violence, right? Don't get me wrong, the anime, you had a couple little fight scenes, scuffles and all that, but nothing beats the manga. While one might think this is the last thing you'd find in a show about card games, nearly all of the first six mainline anime series Actual mugging. Huh. Who is this large man that goes to their middle school? Yo, that's a fact, right? <laughs> have at least one example of someone straight up getting punched in the face. This is especially true for Duel Monsters and 5Ds. Despite everything in these shows pretty much revolving around a children's card game, I actually think that it does make some sense to throw hands every now and again when you have storylines and arcs that revolve around the fate of the universe, saving a beloved family member slash friend, or just taking down an oppressive authoritarian government. With all, I was just going to say as long as the storyline allows it and it like goes with the plot. 100%. That said, fighting in IRL Yu-Gi-Oh, where you can face real life consequences, yeah, that doesn't make much sense at all. Into the the only way, if you're fighting IRL for playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and you won't really get in trouble, is if you're under the age of 16, unless like you do something outrageous and outlandish, you know what I mean? The world of Springfield, Missouri, where apparently the local Yu-Gi-Oh duelists are just built differently. Here the duelists don't settle things using trivial means such as life points or the battle phase, but instead use their fist. Or so one- Uh, hold on. What was I say? A victim told officers he and Burkhart were playing a game, and once the game is over, the victim asked Burkhart to play faster next time. Uh, no, no shot, uh, no shot time rules made the news like this. A player by the name of Haven Burkhart must have clearly thought as he was either having his worst day ever After fighting or he was impersonating a rare hunter and took things way too seriously. Before I go into what happened, I would like to point out there were numerous witnesses to these events, one of which publicly gave their account of things on social media. In addition, this was also reported on by the local Springfield News, KY3. So, I think that there's more than enough valid sources to prove exactly what went down. This all happened about a week ago at a local shop where Haven Burkhart was playing at a local's tournament. According to other sources Games on the internet, fun, and I mainly mean Yu-Gi-Oh! Paisana, who also covered this event, side notes, I'll link- Talk about great memories, getting fucking suplexed, jeez. Both of his videos in the description below, Burkhart was well known at this locals and had a reputation for being, well, pretty terrible at the game, despite always playing the best decks. Just imagine spending all that money on like the best decks, like right now Snake Eyes. See how expensive that deck actually is? Like that's ridiculous. Or, or the players that play nothing but Starlights and stuff like that. It's like bro, or collector, like Starlight, Collector's Rares, Secret Rares, all that and whatever. It's like bro. Calm down, right? And then get crushed by some other player who is like twenty dollar deck, maybe, <laughs> if that. For the record, Haven Burkhart was playing Snake Eye <laughs> at this specific locals, and it apparently lost to Alter Geist of all things. Which, let's be real here, if you're playing a borderline tier zero deck and you're out here losing to Alter Geist, I think that it's safe to say you either don't know how to play the deck properly or you are just bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. 
Burkhardt was also known for being a quote unquote meth head and also apparently routinely hanging out with some pretty shady friends. According to eyewitness accounts, it was round four when Burkhardt and his opponent Jordan were dueling. Jordan had just finished his turn and the duel was getting relatively low on time. He passed turn to Burkhardt with over three minutes to play, who started playing slowly. For all the strictly masterful players out there, this is a commonly used tactic in the TCG to attempt to use all the remaining time in a duel without giving your opponent another turn. The reason you do this is so that they can't immediately go to battle phase to kill you or gain the life point lead, which of course would result in them winning the duel. That's super frustrating too, trying to actually play a game and you know why they're stalling, like straight up stalling for time. Let imagine you start playing a duel, right? 8,000 life points a piece or whatever, right? Uh, first turn is your turn. You can't attack, you can't do anything. Goes over to your opponent's turn or whatever. They go ahead, they attack you. It's like, all right, cool. You do some stuff. Uh, negate the attack, but they still hit you. They don't fully OTK you. They hit you. The light points go down. You play your turn. Like, because you're feeling normal about it's turn three. Here you go. Boom. Whatever. Got the stuff going. We got a couple, like, synchro summons. A couple link monsters popping off. We got effects popping off. Like, and you're, like, countering what's going on. <clears throat> Ends up being their turn. And they have a slight life point lead ahead of you. And let's say, because usually it's about 45 minutes to an hour that you're chilling. So within those first couple of turns, you're looking at like maybe three minutes, three to five minutes of gameplay. And then you have them sitting across the table from you, literally just wasting time. It's like, bro, we got like 40 minutes left of this. Like, come on, you gotta, you gotta play a little bit. I'd say it right away, be like, bro, hurry up. You gotta hurry up. If you didn't, I'd scoop and be like, yo, ref, judge, deal with this. <laughs> it was clear to Jordan and everyone else watching the duel what Burkhardt was trying to do, so Jordan kindly asked him, quote, hey, can you please play faster since it's almost time in the round? To which Burkhardt replied, quote, nah, can you shut the F up though? Wow. It should be obvious, but he did not say, yo, dead ass, catching a smack, bro. F, in fact, he used a different four letter word, but I try not to swear in my videos. Moving along, Jordan responded with, quote, well, you're slow playing, which must have struck a nerve with Burkhardt because he went full rage mode and replied with, quote, well, how about I punch your teeth then? Everyone wants... <sighs> all in all, everybody should respect everybody. Even in Yugi, like any kind of... It's a children's card game, you know? Like, come on, bro. Get over yourself, like the hurdle. You know what I'm saying? The way how people use the hurdle, the hurdle of their arm in the 90s, man. Get over that hurdle, bro. Or you're just going to trip land on your fucking face. Jesus. Watching this video already knows that by this point alone, Burkhardt had not only completely crossed the line by threatening to punch his opponent and also being a disrespectful douche when Jordan simply asked him to play faster because they were close to time, but such actions can and should warrant both a Konami suspension to his Kasi ID for all organized play, but also a local card shop banning. I have no idea what type of man-child mentality or maturity it must take to want to attack someone over a Yu-Gi-Oh duel, let alone when all your opponent did was simply ask you to play a little bit faster. Yeah, nah, that's some straight up shenanigans, man. That, that's, that's a butthurt player. I mean, there was zero provocation, zero taunting, no trash talking, or anything of the sort. If he had simply stopped, Burkhart probably would have gotten away with just being banned from this shop for making threats. But predictably, he took every possible action imaginable to make the situation worse. As Jordan felt threatened by Burkhart saying he was going to punch him, and the fact that he had now stood up, Jordan swiftly called 911 to contact the police. Other players at this locals then went to alert the store owner of the situation so that he could intervene. During that time, Burkhart walked to the store's front counter, returned the playmat that he had borrowed for the tournament, and then told the lady at the register, quote, give me my prize pack now. The lady can't be demanding your prize pack like that, son. What are you saying? What are you, 
I'm surprised. Like I, I don't know. All I, all I know is like, yo, I'm surprised that woman didn't look at him and be like, yo, you can leave, like right now. You borrowed a mat. You, you didn't even bring your own mat. You're like demanding that. Get out of here. You can't be pulling that kind of, that kind of shenanigan. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's like you're joking around and you're familiar with the store. I, I'd understand that because they could take it as a joke or whatever. Even though you're trying to be like kind of serious, but you can laugh off like, ha ha. <laughs> working the front register had no idea of the situation and simply responded quote well i'm about to do prize support in a moment at this time the store owner walked up and after asking burkhardt a few questions told him that he was banned not only from this store but from all his card shops in the area and that he never wanted to see him step foot in here again this is just as as he should as he should like straight shenanigans man that's my opinion but personally i think burkhart probably just should have taken that as a win and left so instead of course he did the exact opposite and demanded his entry packs after the store owner refused saying quote you need to leave before this gets worse burkhart went one step further in his bad decision making by putting his hand on the owner and shoving him out of the way as he jeez that's a big no-no can't be doing that especially to the owner he controls everything man you can't be pulling that kind of shit what what like who does this dude think he is? that's like a lack of respect man he reached over the counter to forcibly grab packs from the prize pool unfortunately for him this was a get him with theft terrible decision for many reasons including the fact that the store owner jason was formerly in the military jason said quote you done effed up now mfr as he picked burkhardt off the ground and slammed him to the floor to subdue him as three local police officers showed up tackled burkhardt and put him in handcuffs Quick they needed three cops to grab this guy <laughs> like what did he do back in south park when uh they tried to give cartman the shot he like grease himself up run around like a little piggy weep, weep. <laughs> side notes i know that generally speaking i refuse to curse in my videos but jason going full samuel jackson on burkhardt is easily my favorite part of this entire story according to the local ky3 news burkhardt was arrested for first degree burglary possession of a controlled substance so yeah it looks like he really was a meth head after all Damn. Attempted stealing and fourth degree assault. Homeboy's out here smoking meth before Yu Gi Oh matches. Jesus. What are you saying with your life, man? Nah. Nah, bro. He was booked by the Webster County Sheriff's Office, That's where messed up. he received this lovely mugshot, which, let's be honest, as a Yu Gi Tuber, I would be remiss if I did not use as the thumbnail for this video. But with all that said, before Burkhart was booked and put in a jail cell, unbelievably things got even worse for him. Remember how I said 26 year old uh, Haven Bucker is charged with first degree burglary, possession of a controlled substance, attempt stealing, and fourth degree assault. Investigators say on July 9th. Officers respond to a tournament because a man was threatening other customers inside the store. When officers got there, uh, they separated Burkhardt from from the fight and arrested him. Witnesses tell KY3 the tournament was a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. <laughs> a, a children's card game tournament. Victor told officers he and Burkhardt were playing a game. And once the game was over, the victim asked Burkhardt, yeah, Burkhardt, my bad. To play faster next time, the tournament uh, consisted of timed games. After the victim made this suggestion, Buckhart, Buckhart, my bad, replied with a threat to the victim, like, I'm going to punch your teeth out. Beginning that Burkhart had been hanging right? around some questionable company. According to authorities, a man was in the, was in the passenger seat of Buckhart's car. Uh, authorities identified the man and arrested him for active warrants out of well, that question green green county for failure to appear for tampering with a motor vehicle man shady sketchy Yu-Gi-Oh tournament people yo dead ass if if i were to own a tcg store and i see some dude coming through acting super sketchy it's like nah you gotta get out of here bro you can't be in here at all 
right? Even if someone came through dank in a weed and shit and be like, nah, man, you can't, you can't be in here. Little kids are in here, you know? That's when it's like, sometimes you should host. What I think would actually be really cool is like hosting underground tournaments for Yu-Gi-Oh! For like older people and stuff, right? Like later on throughout the night, no kids around, give the setting. You know what I'm saying? But that's messed up. That's messed up. I can't believe they needed three cops to grab this guy. Remember how I said at the beginning that Burkhardt had been hanging around some questionable company? Well, that questionable company caught the eye of the arresting officers, presumably while they were taking Burkhardt to the police car. As it stands, Burkhardt went to locals with a friend who happened to be hanging out in the car. And that friend also happened to have an outstanding bench warrant for failure to appear in court and was also arrested on the spot. While apprehending Burkhardt's friend, police conducted a search of his car and found drug paraphernalia. Burkhardt told police in EMS that he had shot up heroin 45 minutes before the Yu-Gi-Oh! locals. And That's ridiculous. What? According to court documents, officers on the scene also found drug paraphernalia in Buckhart's car before officers started drive uh, started driving Buckhart to dri to the jail. He told them he was overdosing on heroin. Buckhart told authorities he had used heroin 34 or five minutes beforehand. EMS crews arrived to look at Buckhart and that he was overdosing during what? the rage. Although, in actuality, it maybe could have been a completely different drug, such as, I don't know, maybe cocaine, which police also found in Burkhardt's wallet. This guy- Burkhardt is being held in a Webster County jail on 50k bond. Damn, $50,000 for this dude. Uh, he was scheduled to appear in court on July 23rd. Also found cocaine in Burkhardt's wallet during the investigation. Authorities said Burkhardt- had four grams of cocaine on him. What? This dude was pretty and heavy, man. An upper and a downer at the same time, man. I'm surprised he didn't get the nod. I guess that's why he had to have that uh in his wallet. Jeez. That is insane. Burkhardt was being held on a fifty thousand dollar bond and is set to appear in court on July twenty third. Whether or not the drugs influenced Burkhardt's, you know, rampage and tirade that he went on at the locals, I think it's safe to say that he won't be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in that area for a long time, nor do I think that any shop should want to let him attend considering such an incident. The right Bro, just imagine me and this kid, right? You go to jail, like you actually go to jail with a bunch of inmates, like jail, not prison, jail. There's a difference, huge difference. Even like holding before jail you know what i mean and they're like yo what are you in for like paperwork kind of styles right it's like oh i was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and like some kid told me to play fast <laughs> man planning to attack his opponent tried to steal prize support fought with a store owner caught with cocaine in his wallet high off heroin the entire time it's going on that's ridiculous yeah that's the type of player i don't want in my community especially if i have young kids around Yo, this guy is literally speed running how to make yourself a more like ten thousand percent man like a infinity percent you can't be having people like that coming into tcg shops trying to partake in like tournaments and stuff like that when their little kids are in there whether it be for pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, one piece digimon like it doesn't matter little kids are around you can't be pulling that kind of that kind of bogusness you know what i'm saying that's that's messed up in my opinion actually if i have young kids around this guy was literally speed running how to make yourself a real life Yu-Gi-Oh super villain and Honestly, I think that he was succeeding better than anyone could have ever imagined. So my takeaway from easily one of the craziest Yu-Gi-Oh stories that I have heard all year is don't go to locals while you're high on drugs. And honestly, don't do anything that Haven Burkhardt did on this day, because that is just absolutely absurd. Anyways, whatever you guys thought about any of this, you leave that in the comment section below. And thank you guys for watching as always. Now that I've got Bro. your attention, if you thought- Bro. The UV anime- That, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? Like, who does that? Who does that? Gets high on heroin, chills like four grams of cocaine in their wallet. I'm gonna go down to the locals today, and I'm gonna play 
this deck that I spent a bunch of money on, even though I don't know how to play Grave Diggers correctly. And then starts playing someone who, like we said at the beginning, man, playing against someone that knows what's going on and stuff, and apparently it's like, might have been on the nod, man. Might have been on the nod a little bit from the drugs and stuff, right? Where he didn't fully comprehend what was going on. And that's probably what his defense is going, is going to say about it. But it's like, man, you knew what you were doing. That's messed up. That's super messed up. <laughs> but yo, go check out uh, Mega Capital G for videos like this. That's pretty dope. Like, yo, honestly, I've been looking through uh, Mega Capital G's page for a minute, and he has a bunch of dope, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! stories and stuff like that that's going on. This Yu-Gi-Oh! player was arrested and suplexed for slow playing at Lobos. Make sure that you check them out. Links are going to be down in the description, as always. And yeah, man. Until next time, have yourselves a fantastic day. And let me know down in the comment section, like, what do you think about this whole situation about homie here doing drugs, going to a locals event with little kids around? The only cool part about that is he got suplexed and arrested. But, like, suplexed. <laughs> but, yeah, man. It's been your homie Kovacs back on the corner. Have yourselves a great one. I'll see you guys next time, man. Peace.